Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel Power Chemistry for Student. Today we are going to discuss about liver function test. Uh, itself a very extensive topic that covers a varieties of test uh, and interpretation of that test. But I have tried to summarize that whole liver function test in today's video. So it is very very important and very commonly prescribed test in today's clinical practice. So before going to learn in detail about this liver function test, let first we see or revise what are the different functions of liver. The first and foremost important function of liver is metabolism. It plays a central role in the metabolism. If we talk about carbohydrate metabolism, then the maintenance of blood glucose level around the clock is done with the help of liver by the by glycolysis or gluconeogenesis, glycogenesis or glycogenolysis. Fat metabolism, beta oxidation of fatty acid, lipoprotein synthesis, ketone body formation, cholesterol synthesis. This is very important pathways are related to fat metabolism. The same way protein metabolism, transamination reaction, deamination reaction, as well as formation of carbohydrate, particularly the glucose from the amino acid that is from the non nitrogenous part, is that by the gluconeogenesis process that occurs in the liver, as well as at the end product of uh, protein or the amino acid metabolism that is ammonia that is also taken care by the liver by converting it into the urea. Bile metabolism that is production of bile salt from the cholesterol that is the only way of excretion of cholesterol from our body as well as there are other varieties of functions of bile salt that is also done with the help of liver. If we talk about the synthetic function so all the plasma protein except immunoglobulin synthesized by the liver cholesterol synthesis take place in the liver synthesis of TG and its delivery to the adipose tissue for the storage purpose done uh, as VLDL that is very low density lipoprotein as well as the lipoprotein synthesis take place in the liver that is particularly as I told you VLDL very low density lipoprotein. Now detoxification and excretory functions the very important one is excretion of urea or the by detoxification of ammonia then the bilirubin that is end product of him catabolism that converted into bilirubin and excreted by the liver to the small intestine then the cholesterol as i told you that is excreted as a bile salt from our body then the drug metabolites and other toxic substances detoxified by the process of conjugation and the phagocytosis in the liver. As we know, liver is one of the organs that store so many nutrient elements. Glucose that is stored in the liver in the form of glycogen. Along with that, there are fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, K, water soluble one that is B12. The amount of iron and the copper also stored in the liver. Apart from this function, there are certain miscellaneous functions carried out by the liver. Again, there are also important like 25 hydroxylation of cholecalciferol. That is one of the steps for the active form formation of active form of vitamin D that is calcitriol. Liver is site for the RBC production or the erythropoiesis in the first trimester it produces the IGF that is insulin like growth factor 1. It helpful for the production of angiotensinogen and thromboboitin that respectively regulate the blood pressure and the platelet synthesis and along with that there are immune and inflammatory functions also carried out by the liver. So this was the list of functions that is carried out by the liver. Now when we talk about liver function test that gives an idea about liver dysfunction but that are full in the diagnosis of certain diseases. So here there are just examples like this 
set of tests or the liver function tests helps in the diagnosis of uh, jaundice, hepatocellular disease, cholestasis, cirrhosis, hepatitis, liver malignancy, steatosis, or any blood coagulation dis blood coagulation disorder, or like hereditary disorder like hemochromatosis. So to diagnose or to get support of uh, this the diagnosis of this disorders, this liver function test helps a lot. So this liver function test usually uh, one of the important non-invasive method for a screening of liver dysfunction. This is important. It is one of the non-invasive method for the screening of liver dysfunction. And these are the most widely performed tests in the laboratories, mainly to detect the presence of liver disease, to distinguish among the different types of liver disorders, to judge the extent of known liver damage, and to follow the response to the treatment. Okay, so. This is the role of liver function test in our today's clinical practice. So it helps in the to detect the diagnosis of particular liver disease for the differential diagnosis of liver disease to judge the extent of liver damage, like the severity of that particular hepatic damage, and also the therapeutic response to that particular hepatic disease. So we see the set of liver function tests that are classified based are based on the functions of liver also. So like to detect the hepatic excretory functions, there is a set of tests that includes serum, bilirubin, that is total, direct and indirect. There is a urine estimation for the urobilinogen, bile pigment and the bile salt. The liver enzyme panel that includes ALT, that is alanine transaminase, AST, aspartate transaminase, ALK, that is alkaline phosphatase, GGT, that is gamma glutamyl transferase, and 5' nucleotidase. Then comes the plasma proteins that includes albumin, globulin, Ig ratio, and the prothrombin time. Then test for the spatial functions. The includes ceruloplasmin, ferritin, alpha fetoprotein, alpha 1 antitrypsin, and so on. So, we will see one by one this test and see how that helps in the diagnosis of various liver diseases. So, at the end of this, you will be able to pick particular test to prescribe a particular disease in the patient, and also you will understand how to interpret that particular report. So we'll first see how this bilirubin is generated. Um, bilirubin, as we know, it is the end product of heme catabolism. And this heme comes from varieties of heme protein once they break down from the hemoglobin and erythroid cells. From the degradation of them, they releases the heme that contribute to this heme pool daily 250 to 400 milligram per day so on an average 300 milligram per day this heme acted upon by this heme oxygenase enzyme and is converted into bilivertin and the iron present in the heme will be removed in the form of ferritin this bilivertin is a green color pigment with the help of bilivertin reductase system and NADPH it get converted into bilirubin. It's a yellow color pigment. Now this bilirubin is synthesized in the reticulo endothelial system by the heme catabolism. This bilirubin produced is water insoluble. So it cannot transport by its own to the liver for excretion purpose. So this bilirubin binds with the albumin 
and transported to the liver and so this bilirubin is called unconjugated bilirubin once this bilirubin reach to the liver then in the liver there is a process of conjugation occur with the help of udp glucuronyl transferase enzyme that converts this water insoluble bilirubin to the water soluble bilirubin by the process of conjugation so as i told you this heme on an average produce bilirubin produced by the heme catabolism there is on an average 300 mg per day that is we are talking about heme this bilirubin produced from the heme catabolism there is of two type one is unconjugated initially then it transported to the liver and goes through the process of conjugation and it forms conjugated bilirubin the total bilirubin normally present in the serum is around 0.2 to 0.8 mg per deciliter as i told you it is of mainly two type conjugated and unconjugated out of this the unconjugated is 0.2 to 0.6 mg per deciliter while conjugated is 0.1 to 0.2 mg per deciliter the estimation of this serum bilirubin the total and conjugated will help in differential diagnosis of jaundice that is important that helps in the differential diagnosis of the cause of jaundice like prehepatic jaundice hepatic jaundice and post hepatic jaundice you will get to know about in detail about the jaundice in our next link video for uh, detection of unconjugated and conjugated bilirubin what we perform is called van den berg reaction so in this van den berg reaction when the conjugated bilirubin mix with the reagent it produces the purple color when the conjugated bilirubin mix with the van den berg reagent it produce immediately purple color that is known as van den berg direct positive test while the unconjugated bilirubin mix with the van den berg reagent and after that when we add alcohol when we add alcohol it gives purple color so because of that it gives color after addition of alcohol so it gives indirect test positive so that unconjugated bilirubin unconjugated bilirubin is also known as van den berg indirect positive test and indirect bilirubin so based on this the conjugated bilirubin is also called a direct bilirubin while the unconjugated bilirubin is also called indirect bilirubin that is usually com uh, clinically we use this term direct bilirubin and indirect bilirubin instead of conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin so in the given sample if both conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin are present then it gives immediate purple color and once we add alcohol once we add alcohol the color will be intensified and this is called biphasic reaction that means it contains both higher amount of conjugated bilirubin as well as unconjugated bilirubin so this bilirubin that comes from the heme converted into conjugated bilirubin and will excreted to the small intestine then this bilirubin converted into urobilinogen in the large intestine with the help of anaerobic bacteria this anaerobic bacteria convert this urobilinogen to stercobilinogen this stercobilinogen converted to stercobilin urobilinogen converted to urobilin and that is the pigments bile pigments responsible for the normal color of urine and stool as well as this part of bilirubin and urobilinogen 
bilirubin and urobilinogen enters into the liver that is called anterohepatic circulation and get entry into the systemic circulation that goes to the kidney and it excreted in the urine that is about urobilinogen so this is a bilirubin catabolism so usually if we say about a bilirubin it not appears in the urine and whenever it appears it's only conjugated bilirubin that appears in the urine but again the conjugated bilirubin is also not present in the urine but it appears that is suggestive of certain pathology like obstructive jaundice in obstructive jaundice the conjugated that is a water soluble bilirubin is not able to excrete it from liver to the small intestine so that bilirubin will be regurgitated and enter into the systemic circulation and will be filtered into the kidney and appears in the urine that is detected with the help of fuchs test so that presence of bilirubin in the urine suggestive of obstruction to the bile duct and resulting in an obstructive jaundice then urobilin and stercobilin that is normally present in the small quantity in the feces as well as in the stool but the level of urobilin <coughs> and stercobilin increases in case of prehepatic and hepatic diseases and it is absent in urine and stool in case of obstructive disease or we can say post hepatic jaundice resulting in pale urine and the clay color stool the test we use to detect urobilin and stercobilin in urine that is ehrlich test usually the urobilin is detected by the ehrlich test in the urine then comes the bile salts urine bile salt usually <coughs> bile salt excreted from the liver to the small intestine in bile but whenever there is obstruction to that bile duct it leads to an obstructive jaundice so the bile salt will not be able to excrete or to come to the small intestine and that will be regurgitated back to the systemic circulation and appears in the urine appears in the urine and that is detected by hayes sulfur flower test okay so this is all about uh serum bilirubin and this bile pigments in the urine so by using this simple estimation of serum bilirubin and urine bile pigments we can differential diagnose the jaundice now we can diagnose the patient is suffering from which type of jaundice as i told you the bilirubin is the total bilirubin is elevated in jaundice but when a direct or what we can say a conjugated bilirubin is elevated more it is suggestive of obstructive etiology so it is suggestive of obstructive jaundice or whenever there is indirect bilirubin that is unconjugated or water insoluble bilirubin is elevated in excess it is due to excess rbc destruction that is suggestive of hemolytic jaundice or pre hepatic jaundice the same way if we go for the urine bile pigment that also give an idea about which type of jaundice patient have whenever there is an obstruction to the biliary canal ugly or bile duct that bile pigment will not appear normally to the urine or stool so there will be a absence or decrease amount of urobilinogen and urobilin in case of obstructive jaundice as well as clay color stool because of absence of stercobilinogen in the stool the same way the level of urobilinogen and urobilin increases in case of hemolytic jaundice and the stool is of dark color 
in hemolytic jaundice while that is uncertain or certain unequivocal response seen in case of hepatocellular jaundice so by estimating the serum bilirubin that is total as well as direct and indirect and by checking the bile pigment in the urine we can differentially diagnose the jaundice then comes the liver enzyme there is a whole panel of enzymes that helps in the diagnosis of hepatic diseases so there is a large number of enzyme estimation that are available to certain the liver function the first foremost important there are amino transferases that mainly include alt that is alanine transaminase also known as sgpt primarily located or secreted from the hepatocyte cells and the second amino transferase is ast that is aspartate transaminase also known as sgot and present in various tissues like liver cardiac muscles skeletal muscles kidney brain creas brain etc there are sensitive indicators of hepatic cell injury whenever there is damage to the hepatic cell the level is increases the normal level of this amino transferases are on average 30 to 40 international unit per liter so level of this amino transferases is elevated mildly like up to 250 international unit per liter in conditions like chronic viral hepatitis or steato hepatitis like this fatty liver and non uh, alcoholic steato hepatitis mild to moderate elevation that is 250 to 1000 international unit per liter level that is elevated in case of alcoholic hepatitis or in autoimmune hepatitis or in the wilson's disease while large elevation or the severe elevation on amino transfer is level seen that is a more than thousand international unit per liter in acute viral hepatitis massive hepatic necrosis or acute drug induced hepatic damage of the drug induced hepatitis so this helpful for the differential diagnosis of liver diseases the other enzyme from the panel is alkaline phosphatase it has a different six enzymes out of that one is secreted from the biliary canal equine epithelials there is metallo enzymes requiring zinc as a coenzyme and have a maximum p activity at ph alkaline ph that is around 10 the normal reference range of alkaline phosphate is about 30 to 95 international unit per liter. You find it a little bit different depending upon the literature. But its level is significantly higher in growing children because one of the major isoenzyme of alkaline phosphate is that is present in the bone. So the level of alkaline phosphate is usually elevated in obstructive jaundice as i told you it is secreted one isoenzyme of alkaline phosphate is, is secreted from the epithelial cells of biliary canaliculi so whenever there is obstruction it leads to irritation to that epithelial cells and causes secretion of alkaline phosphate then it leads to cholestasis increase in cholestasis hepatic malignancies or the brain sorry the bone diseases or it may also elevated in the primary or metastatic bone malignancies then comes the ggt that is known as gamma glutamyl transferase it is a microsomal enzyme widely distributed in the body also in the liver it helps in the absorption of amino acid by the mister's cycle also have in the synthesis of glutathione that is an important biological peptide the reference range is 10 to 15 international unit per liter but its level is elevated in alcoholic so alcohol induces its synthesis so helpful in the detection of alcohol abuse the important role of ggt is that its level rises 
it level rises and the proportion to the alcohol intake even before the other hepatic enzymes are elevated due to liver damage so it is very very important indicator of indication of alcohol abuse then comes the 5 prime nucleotides it also increases in the hepatobiliary diseases like GGT and alkaline phosphatase the normal reference range is 2 to 50 international unit per liter and the advantage of estimating this 5 prime nucleotide disease it not altered in the bond disease while another marker of hepatobiliary disease that is alkaline phosphatase is elevated in the bond disorders now there are certain tests that we can perform to detect whether the synthetic function of liver is okay or not the first of all that includes albumin we know albumin is one of the major plasma protein present in our body and like other plasma protein albumin is also synthesized by the liver only the immunoglobulin is not synthesized by the liver quantitative estimation of protein is very very important to detect the synthetic function of liver and the quantitatively it is the most important protein synthesized by the liver if we say uh, albumin the reference range is about 3.5 to 5 gram per deciliter globulin that is 2.5 to 3.5 gram per deciliter and HE ratio is 1.5 to 2 is to 1 this is the normal reference range of albumin and globulin this albumin is a major contributor to the plasma osmolality its half life is about 20 to 25 days so even after the liver damage the plasma albumin liver will not start declining immediately because its half life is 20 to 25 days so whenever there is an injury to the liver it takes almost one to two months to affect this albumin liver in the blood so it is a marker to access the chronic liver damage not the acute one and this low serum albumin is commonly observed in severe chronic liver diseases come not to the acute liver disease as well as in the malnutrition the other test for the synthetic function is prothrombin time uh, like prothrombin is like other blood clotting factor it is synthesized by the liver but whenever there is a damage to the liver and the prothrombin liver is uh, decreases more than 80 percent this prothrombin time will be prolonged. The normal value of protein or the prothrombin time is around 11 to 13 seconds. Even vitamin K deficiency or leads to also leads to increases the prothrombin time. The next is pre-albumin that is also known as transthyretin helped in the transport of thyroid hormone that is T3 and T4. Its half-life is only two days so it is helpful to access hepatic function early in the course but it is not the routine test prescribed to detect the hepatic function ceruloplasmin it is an acute phase protein synthesized by the hepatic parent camel cells the reference range is around 20 to 35 milligram per deciliter and it is elevated mainly in hepatic conditions like active viral hepatitis biliary cirrhosis hemochromatosis that is iron deposition and obstructive biliary diseases while the level of ceruloplasm decreases in Wilson's disease other alpha phytoprotein it is an oncofetal antigen normally present in the fetal blood but sometimes it is elevated or the higher level seen in the adults in conditions like chronic hepatitis cirrhosis that is a malignancy of liver germ cell tumors and the neural tube defect and this alpha phytoprotein is one of the important tumor marker that helps in the diagnosis of malignancy 
other important product that is in the by the liver is alpha 1 antitrypsin that also have food in the diagnosis of or to detect any abnormality in synthetic function it is an acute phase glycoprotein with a reference range of 1 to 1.6 gram per deciliter it is increases in the infection pregnancy and those who are taking oc pills white's level decreases in the emphysema and the neonatal cholestasis then comes the haptoglobin haptoglobin is a, one of the important transport protein the transport free hemoglobin that comes after the destruction of rbc or that releases due to the destruction or lysis of rbc that free hemoglobin binds with this haptoglobin and transport it to the reticular endothelial system for the further breakdown the level of haptoglobin increases in the inflammation trauma infection and myocardial infraction while the level of haptoglobin decreases in severe hepatocellular liver diseases and a severe hemolysis now to check the metabolic function of liver there are certain set of test out of that the first one is galactose tolerance test usually what we are aware of is glucose tolerance test that used to diagnose the diabetes mellitus but here it is galactose tolerance test the important thing about that is galactose is exclusively metabolized by the liver or the hepatocytes so the galactose utilization by liver that is measured to access its metabolic function what amount of galactose utilized by the liver in particular time that is measured by this test so we can get an idea about the metabolic function of liver for that individual person the subject is given IV administration of galactose at a dose of 300 mg per kg of body weight after giving that every 10 minutes some blood sample is drawn for the next 2 hours and from that the glucose galactose level is estimated in normal individual the half life of galactose is about 10 to 15 minutes but whenever there is an hepatocellular damage that is elevated and that conditions may be like infective hepatitis or cirrhosis other metabolic functions that is blood ammonia that we can uh, give an index of urea synthesis by liver what amount of urea is synthesized by the liver that gives we get an idea by estimating the blood ammonia level that ammonia come from the amino acid metabolism that converted to urea by the liver and this activity the conversion of ammonia to urea is decreases in hepatic cell damage the resulting in increased blood ammonia level is seen in the liver failure that is cirrhosis of liver hepatic encephalopathy as well as portocaval anastomosis to measure this blood ammonia usually arterial blood has to be collected but the test is usually with a low diagnostic significance to check the excretory function test the bsp that is promo subthelin test has been carried out for that the dye has to be injected whether that liver is able to excrete the dye or not the non toxic compound is exclusively excreted through bile the dose is 5 mg per kg given intravenously and after injecting that uh, the serum concentration of this uh, bromosulfurin dye is measured at 45 minute and at the interval of 2 hour if more than 5% of dye is retained in body resulting in abnormality in excretory function of liver now in hepatic disease is one of the important etiology is autoimmune diseases this autoimmune chronic hepatitis is also due to the production of antibody against mainly hepatocyte surface antigen and for that 
the common hepatic antibodies tested are anti nuclear antibody double stranded dna antibody smooth muscle antibody and anti mitochondrial antibody that level is elevated usually in the primary biliary cirrhosis so this was all about the liver function test this, this i have tried to summarize or take the brief of all the liver function test if we summarize that the serum bilirubin the direct and indirect that is detected by the van den berg reaction usually the conjugated bilirubin and the alkaline phosphatase level is elevated it's suggestive of obstructive jaundice the urobilinogen in urine is uh, detected by the ehrlich test increased urobilinogen in the urine suggestive of hemolytic jaundice or the what we can say prehepatic jaundice this alt and ast they are the marker of hepatic damage so they are elevated usually in the uh, hepatocellular jaundice or hepatic jaundice this ggt is an indicator of alcohol abuse so elevated in alcoholic liver diseases to detect the synthetic function of liver and to get an idea about the chronic liver damage this is very important serum albumin prothrombin time is also an important give an idea about the synthetic function of liver to access the excretory function the dye has to be injected that is dye brom sulfthalein test and test to access the detoxification function of liver we have performed hepuric acid test and blood ammonia level elevated that is suggestive of hepatic encephalopathy this is an algorithm that helps in the <clears throat> diagnosis of liver disease and that can help us to reach to a certain conclusion if we perform an enzyme panel and if there is an elevated level of amino transferases that is ALT and AST and there is a decreased level of alkaline phosphatase not decreased but a less elevation of alkaline phosphatase less than 2 time value that is usually suggestive of hepatocellular disease or we can say hepatic disease after that if a major albumin level and if it is normal then suggestive of acute hepatitis and if albumin level is low that is suggestive of chronic hepatitis as i told you serum albumin level decreases in the chronic hepatic disorder now if amino transferases that is ast in elevated is alt is elevated but concentration is less than three times and the alkaline alkaline phosphatase level elevated more than the double it is suggestive of cholestatic disease or what we can say an obstructive diseases again if albumin is lower or sorry normal that is suggestive of acute cholestasis and if it is lower then suggestive of chronic cholestasis now along with acute cholestasis if high ggt level it is suggestive of intrahepatic obstruction and there is a mild elevation in ggt that is suggestive of extrahepatic obstruction so this is all about liver function test there are certain limitations of lfts that the normal liver function test value do not always indicate the absence of liver disease because liver has a very large reserve capacity the patient may have underlying disorder with normal liver function test value for certain period of time and vice versa the asymptomatic people may have abnormal liver function test results or the value at that time we have to diagnose patient based on the clinical examination these are the references that i have used to make this video a lecture so i hope all of you understand uh, the liver function test i hope at the end you will be able to prescribe which test should be asked 
in particular patient to diagnose or to reach to the conclusion for particular diseases and hope you will understand how to interpret the various results thank you so much for listening please like share and subscribe the channel that is biochemistry for student for more videos and if you need more updates related to the biochemistry please visit insta page that is at the red biochemistry for student thank you so much